Welcome to task two of module one of the Open Science MOOC, all about how to develop your own digital researcher profile, or as we like to call it, you are more than just your publications. This task is designed for researchers who want to help build their online profile or help them to amplify their own work. Think of this task a bit like a way of creating an online CV for showcasing your research. It'll probably take you about 30 minutes to complete this, but the estimated time saved again will be immeasurable and probably quite a bit for yourself. While you're here, don't forget that you can join in the discussions with us over at our open Slack channel. Please do feel free to introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about who you are, your background, and how you ended up here. Okay, so hopefully you just got here from the main content for this module, where we just briefly introduce you to several services that you can use to enhance your own researcher profile. These are based around documenting your research publications, the online attention these get, as well as your peer reviewer profile and research collaboration in the open. These are by no means the only platforms available to you. In fact, there are hundreds out there. And these are not limited in scope to documenting your own worth as a researcher. However, the ones which we have selected here, what they're going to do is help you to give you a better idea of how your researcher profile is developing and allow others to see and use that too. So the four we've already met before are ORCID, which is a persistent identifier for you and your research. There's Impact Story, which is a place to document how your research has been shared and reused online. There's Publons, which is a place to document your peer review activities. And then finally, the Open Science Framework, a place to openly collaborate on all of your research. Now, the really cool thing about the, the latter three of these is that they actually all integrate very nicely with ORCID in the first place, which includes pulling in all of the information from there, from your profile, to make building your, your own profile on these new ones a little bit easier. Here, what we're going to do is go through each one step by step and help to showcase your own work, build your own unique researcher profile, and become a more open researcher. So, the first step is getting your ORCID profile set up. ORCID stands for Open Research and Contributor ID. It provides you with a persistent digital identifier that distinguishes you from every other researcher out there. It also ne neatly integrates now with a number of key research workflows, including manuscript and grant submissions, and supports automated linkages between you and your professional activities. This helps to ensure that your work is recognized. Many journals now also require you to have an ORCID profile when submitting manuscripts for publication. So this is a really key part of developing who you are as a researcher. So thankfully, all of these are quite easy and only take a couple of minutes and a few simple steps. Firstly, all you want to do is go to the ORCID website, orchid.org, and click register for an ORCID ID. Here, all you need to do is simply enter your name, email address, and select a password, as well as to choose which visibility settings you want. You can change these later for, for each item in your ORCID profile later, if needed. Once you've selected that, simply uh, acknowledge the terms of use, define that you're not a robot, and register. And you're done. That's it. So congratulations, <laughs> that was very simple. You now have a unique and permanent ID for your research profile. Throughout your research workflow, what you'll do is you'll notice ORCID coming up more and more and more these days, and now you'll be adequately prepared for when it does. Okay, so once you've registered, and you have your ORCID profile, it's time to add some content. There are several key areas here, such as education, employment, funding, works such as papers and posters, and peer reviews. You can also do things like fill out your own biography and enter other information such as alternative names you might be known as, keywords associated with your profile, other identifications such as from uh, Scopus, as well as email addresses and other little bits of metadata. Apparently, they've also just passed 6 million uh, users, so congratulations to Orchid uh, and the team there. <laughs> Fantastic news. For now, don't worry about where it says peer reviews, as we'll get to these later via problems. For the other four, this is really just like any other profile generation that you've done before. In each section of your profile, there's a little button that says, for example, add education or add employment or add a qualification. The most important one for you probably is AdWorks, as this is the documented publication history that you've got. The really nice thing about ORCID here is that a lot of the information which you post can be ported directly into other systems. This is really efficient because it stops you from having to enter the same data over and over again across different platforms, which can get really tiring, as well as frustrating. For your biography, make sure to keep it nice and simple uh, but make sure it's comprehensive and professional too, as this will be something which people will be using to identify you as a researcher. So perhaps the most important section here is your scholarly works. From now, there are three different ways to help add these works to your ORCID record. The first is a direct import from other existing systems, 
The second is to import or export using BibTeX. And the third is manual edition. Let's run through a few simple steps for each to help get familiar with the process. So first of all, let's click search and link. This is the automated one. Here, you can define the work type and geographical area. Each time you select one of these, it will change all of the organization options available for you. Each time you click one of the options, what it will do is take you to the OAuth authorization page. Here, make sure to only authorize sources that you trust and you know, which is actually basically all of the options, but in order to help keep your data safe. After authorizing each organization, you'll be taken to the relevant search page for whichever organization you chose, so for example, Crossref, and that will be automatically populated with a search result from your name. Now, once you've gone through that, you can simply begin to add whichever works you want to your own personal profile just by clicking the Add to Orchid button. You can repeat this as needed for each organization until you're completely happy that you've got all of your major works and whatever you want really associated with your profile. So the second option is to import via BibTeX. This one is a little bit simpler. If you already have a personal citation record as a Bib file, such as the BibTeX file format, which you can get from programs such as Zotero, what you can do is simply select this from your desktop and upload it. Easy peasy. Orchid will do the rest and populate your profile using this. You can also use services like the export functions in Google Scholar to make this even easier for yourself too. Additionally, you can also export your works here in a in.bib format. So BibTeX is a platform independent plain text format used for bibliographic citations. And BibTeX files can be created and edited using many popular reference programs such as Zotero. So it's really, really handy here. Thank you, Orchid. So the third and final option is manual edition. And this one's actually even simpler. So again, pop to your profile, click on add works and then add manually. What happens now is a box should pop up that enables you to enter all of the information that you need. This is generally best for items that don't get integrated by using the other two techniques. Here, Try and add in as much detail as you possibly can to be as comprehensive as possible so that people can identify all of your works much more easily. So one of the beautiful things about Orchid is its connectivity. By allowing trusted organizations to add information to your record, this helps to ensure that the data connected with your Orchid profile is authoritative and trustworthy. And it saves you having to enter the same information over and over again, which can be really boring and fatiguing. The organization which has added the work to your record will be listed as the source of the item. Often, when your work is indexed in one of these organizations, it will be automatically integrated with your profile, helping to keep everything up to date. So for example, when you publish a new preprint, a new article, or do a new peer review, it gets automatically synchronized and integrated with your ORCID profile. That's pretty awesome. All right, so that's the first step done. The second one is we're gonna help you create your own impact story. So now that you've created your own ORCID profile, these next steps are gonna be even easier. Impact Story is a nonprofit dedicated to making scholarly research more open, accessible, and reusable. It's also made by the same people who make Unpaywall and Depsy. These are all incredibly awesome programs created by uh, Jason Priam and Heather Piwawa. It helps to provide a fun and lightweight profile that integrates social media mentions, badges, and even more on top of your ORCID record. So head on over to the Impact Story website, which is profiles.impactstory.org. Here, you can join for free using Twitter. If you don't have a Twitter account yet, don't worry at all. It's worth setting one up here though for now, as we will revisit this later on during the MOOC. After logging in with Twitter, you can link it directly and authorize Impact Story to use your awkward profile you just created in the settings. After that, that's pretty much it. You'll notice that the URL for your Impact Story profile it's essentially the URL, but just with your ORCID profile uh, identification number appended to the end of it. Nice and simple. In the future, if you want, you can really make sure that your profile is up to date in the impact story settings. Yeah, all you have to do is click sync with my ORCID now, and it will do the rest of the work for you. It actually does this automatically too, but you can manually update it, for example, whenever you publish a new paper. So why did you just do that? What's the point in having another profile on top of your ORCID? Well, let's go through it and see if we can get a little understanding here. What you'll notice is that your profile has four main tabs. This is the overview, which is the main page that summarizes the other three sections. The achievements tab 
holds your badges. These help to document your own personal success story, including such cool things like how many of your papers are open access, how many are included in Wikipedia. It also documents things such as the geographic reach of your work, and uh, whether or not you've been cited by someone called Richard. So uh, proceed with caution on this one. The third tab here is your timeline. What this does is it provides you with regular updates on how your work has been shared and who has been sharing it. It does this across a variety of social platforms, including Twitter, Facebook, Google+, Blogs, and Wikipedia. This is incredibly valuable for um, locating new uh, collaborators for your work and to see who is sharing your work and in what context, so you can get an understanding of the real-world conversations that have been shaped around your work. The final tab here is your publications, which is pulled in basically just from ORCID. This gives you all the details on social media shares as well for each item, so you can go through and see how much your work has been shared across different social platforms, as well as who your collaborators are. We think that's pretty cool as well. For me personally though, the timeline is the most important feature. This is because it gives you regular updates about who is sharing your work online, what they're saying about it, and where they're sharing it. This can really help you to understand the wider context of the impact your work is making. And as well as that, open up numerous new collaborations and communication channels for you. And well, that's it. As the folks behind Impact Story say, you are more than your H-index. And this platform provides a wonderful place for you to document how your research is being used across different contexts. Okay, two down, two to go. The third one is going to be all about how to build your peer reviewer profile using a platform called Publons. Publons is a platform for researchers to track, verify, and showcase their reviewing and editorial contributions for academic journals. It also has the Publons Academy, which is a beautiful program designed to help with training with early career researchers for peer review. Before going any further though, we have to add an important little note here. So in 2017, Publons was acquired by a company called Clarivate Analytics. This is the company which includes products such as Web of Science and the Impact Factor, EndNote and Scholar One. At this stage, some of you might not wish to have a profile with this company for various reasons. We don't want to make any sort of judgment call on this, and it's up to each individual here to decide whether or not they wish to proceed. At the present though, there is actually no fully open, so for example non-profit or open source, version of or alternative to Publons in existence. However, if you wish, simply skip this section and head over to the next one for the open science framework. So, assuming that you're okay with this, head on over now to the Publons page at publons.com. Click the Create a Review Profile button. What you'll see here now, thanks to the integration with Web of Science and Clarivate, is that you can now sign into Publons using EndNote and Web of Science and Researcher ID, all with one email address and password. So if you already have an account with another one of these services, go ahead and use that. However, the much better route is if you scroll down just a little bit, it says that you can register using ORCID, and we just created one of those, so that's great. You can also use your Google or LinkedIn accounts if you prefer. For now, let's just stick with ORCID. If you click the little green ORCID ID logo, it will take you to the ORCID page where you will be prompted to log in. Simply sign in as before, and then you'll be redirected back to your new Publons dashboard. Easy peasy. So now, you should have a shiny new Publons profile. On your dashboard, you'll have several key sections. The first is simply your public profile. You can download and edit this, and it also keeps track of your reviewer statistics, as well as your most cited publications, thanks to integration with Web of Science. The second section is your account activity. This includes any notifications, as well as any records which have been processed to be added to your peer reviewer profile. The third section is your records, and this is where all the fun happens. This is where the most important aspect of your Publons profile is populated, and this is your reviewer record. Now, if you haven't performed a peer review just yet, don't worry about this stage, but it is nice to be prepared for when it happens. What this section provides is a full, comprehensive record of all peer reviews that you've ever performed and uploaded into Publons. If you have done a peer review before and you want to add it to your Publons profile, there are some very simple steps to follow here. First of all, go to add a review here. First of all, decide if your peer review is a pre-publication or post-publication peer review. The vast majority of these will, unlike, will most likely be the first option. Secondly, enter the name of the journal or conference you performed the review for, as well as the date that you've submitted it. Thirdly, enter the article title as well as the DOI or Digital Object Identifier. If the article has not yet been published, 
there most likely won't be a DOI yet, but don't worry about that for now. The next step is to decide the level of overall review privacy. This includes whether or not you can display the review content itself or not, which is often contingent on the editorial policy of the journal itself. Publons often has an automatic checking procedure in place for this too. Finally, copy and paste in the review content itself, if you wish. This stage is totally optional, and again, it's really down to you, as well as the journal policy about whether it will be publicly displayed or not. Make sure you know that what your sharing rights are when it comes to peer review, as well as the journal policy regarding this before sharing anything openly. The final step is simply just to create the review. Once created, this will take you to a new page where you'll have options such as getting your review endorsed and verified, scoring the publication, as well as for inviting further feedback on your review. Finally, now all you have to do is just repeat these steps as necessary. This all does have to be done manually at this stage, but thankfully each record only takes a few minutes to add. Publance is now becoming integrated with more and more journals and publishers from all across the world. What happens now is whenever you uh, perform a peer review for one of these journals, you are granted the option to automatically have it exported or imported sorry, into your Publons profile and keep that automatically populated for you. So after you've added one or more records to your profile, what you'll see is this sort of visualization of it on your dashboard. This, this table presents you with a lot of key information, such as the date that all of the reviews uh, were performed by you, which journals you've performed reviews for, as well as the titles of the paper you reviewed. It can also show you information such as whether or not the review was verified, whether the content of the review itself is publicly displayed or not, whether you scored the manuscript you've reviewed or not, as well as whether or not someone has endorsed your review. It also shows you whether or not anyone's provided feedback on your review, as well as the number of citations and altmetric score for that review. What all of this does is help to provide additional context and information that helps to emphasize your, your profile as a peer reviewer. As well as this, you can also integrate your publication record again from ORCID. This will provide additional information from Publons about the review activity around your records, including whether or not the reviewers are openly available or not, whether they have been signed, as well as the number of citations which they've got based on Web of Science data. To, go to, to do this step, simply go to your publications record on the left-hand side and then click Import Publications to populate your publication profile. Here, you have the option to import from Web of Science or import from ORCID. If you've already completed your ORCID profile correctly, you should be able to just import it directly from there, nice and simply. You can also do it manually and by DOI, as we saw before with ORCID. For now, these are perhaps the most important aspects of Publons for, for researchers. You can also now add your records for works as an editor, as well as create a Publons widget to display these records on your website should you wish. Finally, if you wish to learn more about, the peer, about peer review, the Publons Academy provides a great training platform for this. We will also visit, revisit peer review as well in Module 7 of the MOOC under Open Evaluation. Okay, three out of four, and hopefully you get in the hang of this by now, and it's all nice and easy. The next phase, and the final phase, is about opening up your research using the Open Science Framework. For this, head over to the Open Science Framework homepage, osf.io, and simply click Sign Up. Oh look, there it is again. You've got the chance to sign up using your ORCID profile, or create an institutional profile. But now that you have an ORCID, you might as well use it. Once you've logged in, you'll be taken to your dashboard. This contains a rolling list of the various projects integrated with your Open Science Framework profile. Of course, if you've only just set up your account, this will be blank for now. Perhaps one of the most important things to note here is that the Open Science Framework isn't just a standalone platform, but in fact is integrated with a whole host of existing services. These include popular platforms such as GitHub and Google Drive, as well as others such as Figshare and Dropbox, that make it a lot easier for you to collaborate and manage projects from across different platforms and with different people. A fun little extra. If at this stage you've already completed task one of module five on how to set up your first GitHub project, you can take a quick look here and see how easy it is to integrate this into a new or existing project on the Open Science Framework. Besides the main project management and collaboration functionalities, which you can all have a play with, the Open Science Framework also has four more major features. The first of these is the Open Science Framework preprints. This is a searchable database of more than two million preprints at the moment and these are across more than 20 OSF-branded and community-governed platforms. The Open Science Framework hosts a huge number of these branded and community-governed preprint platforms. Some of them are subject-specific, while others cater to particular languages. 
The second part is that Open Science Framework registries. This includes more than 270,000 registrations, which you can learn more about if you go to the MOOC website. The third main feature is OSF Meetings. This is a place where conference organizers can arrange a free poster and presentation ser sharing service for their events. And finally, we have OSF Institutions. This is basically the same thing as the normal OSF, but operating at the institutional level in order to can increase transparency, collaboration, and visibility of research at the institutional level. So congratulations. Hopefully now you have the basic elements of your personalized online researcher profile completed. This provides a great way to showcase your work, increase and track your research impact, and receive appropriate credit for all of this. Making sure that you receive appropriate credit for all of your research outputs is incredibly important as an aspect of open science and moving away from traditional research evaluation methods. It can also be really handy in developing your researcher profile for inside or outside of academia and the future of your career. So just to make sure, by now you should have a personal ORCID profile with any publications associated with this. You should have an impact story profile to help track and showcase the social attention that this research gets. You should also have an open science framework profile to begin openly collaborating and managing your research. And finally, and also optionally, you can have a PubLens profile to track your peer review record. From here on, much of this will be automatically populated as your work progresses. But some advice is to check your impact story profile regularly to see who is sharing your work and in what context, and to make sure that as much of your research is openly available as possible. This includes all of your code, articles, and data, which you can make freely available via the Open Science Framework and make sure that you're getting recognition for your work while advancing research in your field. Finally, if you've created a PubLens profile, make sure to update this regularly as you review new articles in the future to keep track of this really important aspect of research. How you develop your own digital research profile in the future will be primarily down to each individual, but hopefully what we've been able to do here is give you enough of a grounding to give you a good boost and enhance your researcher profile. Well, thank you for listening and we really hope that this has been useful. Do you know a way that this content can be improved? Well, if you've got new GitHub skills, which you've learned through task five, all of our content development primarily happens on GitHub. If you have a suggested improvement to the content layout or anything else, then you can make it and it will automatically become part of the MOOC after verification from a moderator. As a little disclaimer, ORCID, Impact Story, and the Open Science Framework are all strategic partners with the Open Science MOOC. We're not supported them in any way, including financially, and they had no role in the design of this task or any of the MOOC modules. We just think that they're actually pretty awesome. So thank you for listening and enjoy the rest of your Open Science journey.